guys, Kat here with Standing Stone Kennels, and we have another milestone pup date for you. Uh, we got Muddy here. She's the mama to this litter. You haven't really seen her in any of the videos before, uh, but she is super affectionate and very much wants to be with us. So a lot of times we have to put her in a crate when we're doing some of our pup date stuff, because as you can see, she's all about getting some attention from me right now. Um, puppies might come in for a little bit of nursing action, but for the most part, she, when we're here, wants our attention, especially now that these puppies are a little bit older. Right in the beginning of the process, she's a lot more attentive to those puppies, but these guys are three and a half weeks old and are ready to start some puppy mush. We've been talking about that weaning process and what it's going to look like, and we want to show that to you today. So she's going to kind of hang out here while I go over a little bit with these puppies. They're like, oh, we're gonna go for a snack bar. Um, but let me see if you can tell if we've got these little puppy teethies coming in. We finally got them to break through. It's gonna be really hard to see. Um, but, well, you know, you might be able to see their oh, yeah. teeth. Good, yep. good. You can just barely see yep. them. Yep, so that's kind of what we've been waiting for is those teeth to break through. We're actually going to be doing um, with puppy mush, making sure that that's a really soupy, almost liquidy consistency. We're going to show you how we make that um, using their puppy food and some puppy milk replacer. Uh, Mom is still taking care of cleaning up puppy messes as they happen, which is awesome. Um, that's part of a mama's job. So she's feeding them and cleaning up after them as we are in here with her. So. She's going to check stuff out, but when we make that puppy mush, I'm going to have to put Mama up because she is always all about eating and we want to give those puppies an opportunity to try that puppy mush first. Then when they're done eating what they're going to eat for today, for the first time eating puppy mush, she'll get to come back in with them, help clean up a little bit of that food and clean up her puppies because I will imagine that they're going to be a pretty big puppy mess at this point. So I'm going to get her put up and show you what making puppy mush looks like. You can go over color and again real quick because you can see actually with mom kind of a comparison of and point out what they're going to look like. Yeah, so you can see like little mist here, how grayed out she's looking. Um, and then you can see a little bit of a difference in how Sprinkle looks. You can see some of that ticking spots through her legs. Muddy's like, no, you can't. I'm in the way. Okay, yeah, mud, mud. pop out. Go ahead. Or move over to that corner. Um, make, up, make up your mind. Hmm. In and out. This is why a lot of times okay. she's actually out while we're doing our little pup dates. Um, but you can see through Sprinkle's legs and her tail a lot more white showing up. Uh, whereas all the other puppies... A little bit of white in the legs here um, on rain and a little bit on thunder, but for the most part, really grayed out. And as you saw with Muddy, she actually looked pretty ticked, kind of like what Sprinkle and rain and thunder look like, but got almost to the point of roundness that she looks almost solid black unless you look really closely. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get Puppy Mush started and get Mama put in a crate for right now. Are you guys hungry? Yeah, well, we'll get some food here in just a second for you to try. So I'm gonna go get that started. So we are gonna get some warm water started. I got a little bit started here now. And I'm going to add some water to my blender bottle. Oh, the water's cooling off, so it was hot. I gotta wait for it to get a little bit warmer because I really want that um, puppy milk replacer powder to be able to dissolve really easily. So here it's coming warm again. Now, ratios, people are always asking us about how much we do of what, and it just, it really varies so much depending on the size of the litter, the soupiness of that puppy mush that I need to make. So it's going to evolve, and I'm going to have to play with my ratios and consistency a little bit, and it's more about a look and a feel of that puppy mush than an actual ratio and percentage, and they're telling me to hurry up, make them some food. So I'm going to grab my little, um, we are just using a little food blender, um, small size. It's got some measurements on the side here, but I'm going to grab my puppy food. We're feeding Yupanuba large breed puppy food. I'm going to probably start with one cup of food right now. These puppies have never had puppy mush, um, and this food process is going to take a little bit of time for them to get used to eating. So I'm going to bring my kibble over here. Like I said, we just have a super expensive from Walmart 
food processor, and we're gonna get this to blend up. Well, it's gonna be loud. So it's important that we get all of the kibble blended up into as fine a powder as possible because these teeth aren't very big yet. These puppies aren't good about chewing. They haven't had to do that yet. And we definitely don't want them to choke. So I'm shaking it up and down to make sure that that top kibble gets pulled down to the blender and get chopped up really well. So that's pretty well blended. When I pour it in my little food pan, um, also, I wanted to point out real quick, yeah. you're blending the dog food dry. Yes, blending it dry so it can get to a really powdered consistency. That way I can make sure that all the pieces are mixed up. And then we add our milk replacer liquid form until it's of a soupy consistency. So, gonna... Is it soupy or is it slushy, Grandma Redmond? Um, it would be soupy at this point, and then it's going to evolve and become slushier and a little bit thicker consistency until we get to the point where it is full-on dry kibble that they're eating. So we'll show you kind of that transition. Once I get this powder in here, I'm actually going to, if you can see, there are still some big pieces. I need to pick those out. Um, and I either need to throw them in my blender cup and get them reblended, or just pick them out completely. But like I said, these puppies don't have teeth. We don't need big, don't have very much in the way of teeth yet. Um, and we definitely don't want them getting too big of chunks and choking. So we pull those all out. We call these the flying saucers. They're pans that are wide and flat and have little trough areas for the puppies to eat. It makes uh, life pretty easy when you're starting this process. Yeah, these are real stable, so they're not easy for those puppies to flip over and tip over because when I start this process, you'll see they pretty much just climb into the food bowl. And if it was just a tippy little puppy food bowl, it would fall and tip over and make a giant mess. So I've got quite a few hard crunchy pieces still. So, I think, I think I got all the big chunks out. So we're going to go ahead and mix up some um, of the milk. <laughs> Popcorn, pop kibble. Uh, I accidentally hit that button. So, throw those back in there. Put the lid on so that doesn't happen again. Or if it does, it doesn't stay in there. Back to the side. So I'm gonna grab my puppy milk replacer. This, um, when you're supplementing puppies in a sense of having to help support um, milk production by mom, which this was definitely not the case with Muddy's litter because she's such a good milk producer and this is a very small litter. We have have to be pretty consistent on those proportions of what it says to mix by the bag. Right now though, since we're just trying to encourage them to start eating, we want it to be appetizing with the kibble and with the powder, which I'm really short, so I'm gonna put this down here so I can scoop easier. Um, so the ratio of powder to water isn't as important. Just... Should be white, milky-ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other side of it is the reason we use S black, a lot of people talk about, can I use goat's milk or can I use some other combination of some random concoction they found on the internet that somebody said you can make this at home. Um, the S black actually has probiotics in it, which is really helpful and is formulated to be as close to mom's milk as is possible. So. And puppies, you definitely don't want to supplement with cow's milk if you are supplementing with something different. Uh, if you can't get the S black or um, don't want to use the S black, goat's milk would be a better option for sure than cow's milk. So. I'm using my blender bottle because it's got one of those little mixer bowls in there that's going to help me get that powder really well mixed. Check and then you'll get it cleaned up for your protein shake for lunch. I actually just use this one for puppy milk replacement, but if you want to use it for your lunch, go for it. So that looks nice and milky consistency all blended up. Just a second here. Just white, milky. That's yep. what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to, I forgot my fork. Got my fork. So that's just to mix it around because I don't really want to use my fingers. I could, but I don't want to. So I'm not going to start by adding all of this yet. I want to just add a little bit and then judge my consistency. Make sure that gets all mixed up. In this process, you may find a couple more big chunks and pull those out. 
Or sometimes you can crunch them with the little with mixing device. Yeah. yeah. I like a fork instead of a spoon because it allows me to find those pieces and maybe, like Ethan said, break them up a little bit still. So you see how this is pretty runny over here, but pretty thick still through here. So I'm definitely gonna wanna add some more milk replacer to that to get it more liquid form because they haven't had any solids yet. So this is their first transition and it needs to be pretty easy to lap up and swallow down. Okay, see how nice and soupy that looks? I'm gonna just toss that in there to get that washed up. But you see how nice and soupy that looks? I've got one big piece here and here, it looks like, that I'm gonna pull out. But for the most part, really nice and soupy. So we're gonna go encourage these little guys to try it out. So I'm gonna set my soupiness in here. They're all zonked out napping, so we're going to wake everybody up, and I just wake them up and start putting them around the edge of the saucepan, and they're like, ooh, this smells delicious, and nose diving it right away. Slide it's a great there. sign that they're ready for this. If you start this off, even if your puppies are three weeks old and they kind of turn up their nose or they're like, meh, I'm not really interested, then just give it a couple days and try again. So Sprinkle kind of turned away. She, A, might not be as hungry. She might have nursed more recently. She might need a quick potty break before we start eating. But something that you can do too to start this encouragement process because everyone else is kind of eating. Mist is eating along the edge. But I'm going to grab Sprinkle. And I'm actually going to set her with her paws in there because typically once their paws go in, they're like, look, what was that? And they may lick their paw and then go, oh, wow, this is delicious. So got her paws in there and now she's starting to lick. Mist is over here. She's got a little bit of a messy face, but she hasn't really started getting into there. So I'm going to do the same thing with her, put her paws in the edge of that bowl where she can get a little bit better access. Rain, she's all about eating, so I'm going to scooch her around a little bit. But as you can see, they are very interested in trying this puppy mush for the first time, starting to really focus and think about eating, which is a good start. We're going to let them work at this until they look like they're slowing down, not as satisfied, but as you can see, they're going to have messy little faces, they're going to have messy little paws, um, there's probably going to be some, oops, excuse me, some leftovers, and that's when we let mom come back in to... Oh, shoot. I can't see what's going on now. I'm going to let mom in after they're done to help clean up some of that leftovers and clean up the puppy messes. But this is definitely a very good start to the weaning process of introducing puppy mush. Yeah. Thunder says, I will help clean you up, Mist. You're messy. <laughs> so we've got a whole spot over here that really hasn't been nibbled on too much. So I'm going to go ahead and move Thunder over here. And you can do this a little bit, especially at the beginning, start repositioning the puppies a little bit to encourage them to continue eating. And eventually, it probably won't take too long with these puppies and how well they're taking to this puppy mush right away. Eventually, they're just going to put this puppy pan in here. They'll be sleeping over here and that will wake them up and they will rush that puppy um, mush pen and eat as much as they want. Um, and we will adjust the quantity and, like I said, the consistency of the puppy mush as they continue to develop. But if you want to take a pro tip, if you will, on things, even though they're doing a really good job cleaning this up, it doesn't necessarily not mean that they need more yet. You still want this to be a gradual introduction because sometimes puppies are ready to eat and they gobble it down and if you give them more then they can actually make themselves sick which can set you back so yeah and that's what i was going to say this is definitely an adjustment to their diet all they've been having is mom's milk so far so when we introduce puppy mush there's a good chance that their tummies might get a little upset 
their stool may change. So those are all things to watch for because their bodies are having to digest something different. Um, so like Ethan said, we don't want to just necessarily throw more food at them if they're eating this all up and we want this transition to start gradually. So during this first week, we'll probably offer puppy mush about once a week. These puppies are all are fat and have one, really once a, how often? once a day, <laughs> sorry, once a day for the first week, because these puppies are all nice and fat and healthy. Mom's got plenty of milk to go around. This is just the process of starting to introduce food. Now, if it was a bigger litter, and we needed more weight to be distributed amongst the puppies, we may have to do twice a day for that first week. Um, but this is going to, again, evolve as these guys get older, they'll get offered puppy mush more often, and mom will probably hop out of the box a little bit more often and stop nursing as much. Um, she has space to feed them when she wants to, hop out of the box when she doesn't want to. So she's not contained in this space the entire time where she has to feed them and or fend them off constantly. And she naturally will start this weaning process on her own of saying, you only get to nurse so many hours a day. You only get to nurse so many times a day. So I think that they are about to the point where they are slowing down and I'm gonna hop mama back in here so she can clean up a little bit of the food and the puppies. Let me grab her quick. Yeah, money. okay. So she's gonna get in there. She's like, I'm all about eating this up. So she's helping finish puppy food up and puppies are like, oh, we could eat a little bit more. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the plate away because she's done a good job and she doesn't truly need to eat too much more of this. And then she can give some of that attention to her puppies. So we are gonna leave her to clean up puppy faces and puppy paws. And we will be back with another update for you guys and this litter soon. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.